Okay, so first off, I have to say that I'm not actually supposed to be talking about this stuff for privacy purposes, but I have to tell someone, anyone. I work at a psychiatric hospital, let's just call it Sunnybrook. After working at Sunnybrook for a bit, I was given access to patient files, and I found that the special cases are sometimes disturbing. Here's the first truly disturbing one I found. This is the case of a six-year-old girl. Her ID number is 5162, so I'll just use that. 5162's mother admitted her child into the hospital. The mother was quite distressed, claiming her child was possessed by a demon. She says that she can no longer care for her daughter. She has tried priests, exorcists, holy water, and the hospital was her last chance. 5162 was brought to room 83, and upon initial observations, she seemed to be an ordinary child, not showing any of the symptoms her mother described on page 2. She went to her scheduled therapy session at 3.30 p.m. After early examination, I believe that she has schizophrenia. She shows signs of hallucinations, delusions, and lack of emotion. This may explain why her mother thinks she has been possessed. 5162 admitted to killing her baby brother. She would not say why. She told me that she has to kill her mother for locking her up. I called security shortly after and had them escort her to her room. On the way back to her room, she attacked the security guard. The guard recounts, I went to the doctor's room and walked with the girl. The doctor said to secure her wrist, but she's a kid, so I didn't. But, you know, after all I've seen here, I should have known better. I had her follow me to the room, and then when I turned around, she was just gone. So I ran back, and there she was, just holding a painting. And I asked her what she was doing, and she just started running at me and screaming and said that she needed to kill all the doctors to escape. 5162 was finally escorted to her room, and her door was secured. During the night rounds, another guard heard sounds and investigated. She had removed all of the heads from the dolls, and she was clawing them apart with her hands. Her privileges were removed. Medication has drastically improved her condition. She has gone three weeks without incident, and she has been given supervised access to the playroom with patients 5165 and 5133. During a shift change in the playroom, 5162 beat another patient to death in 26 seconds. This is a transcription of what the camera saw. 5162 plays with the other two children. The supervisor leaves the room for his shift change. Camera switches. Supervisor walks down hall to other supervisor, two doors down. They greet. Screams are heard, and both supervisors run to playroom. Camera switches. 5162 watches supervisor leave room. She stands quickly, grabs the four and a half pound dollhouse, and raises it over her head, smashes it onto 5165 with incredible force. Her face seems enraged and is red. 5133 starts crying and screaming, and the other one is passed out and bleeding. 5162 starts screaming that she needs to kill everyone to escape. She grabs a piece of broken dollhouse, and proceeds to beat and stab 5165. Supervisor's in her room and grab 5162, and she thrashes and stabs Supervisor on the arm, 
and the supervisor continues restraint. The second supervisor holds 5165's wound shut, and after checking a pulse, they both escort 5162 to her room. 5133 remains crying until supervisor escorts to therapy. 5162 is put into a straitjacket eventually, with increased medication. At 2.46 a.m., according to security cameras, the patient escaped the straitjacket by chewing through it. A guard made his rounds to her room at 2.53 a.m. and witnessed her attempting to strangle herself. Guard pulled 5162's hands free from the fabric and is bitten on the neck, drawing blood. The patient tore through the neck with her hands and the guard passed out. When the commotion was noticed on security cameras, the other guards made their way to room 83 and noticed that she was gone. She escaped through the door that the first guard did not close. The patient has not been found. Security is on high alert and their safety is a priority. At 5.14 p.m., 5162 was found dead behind East Stairwell. She had slit her wrist vertically and was lying in her blood. While I omitted the dates, it took almost two weeks for 5162 to be found, and her body was found in the first few days that I was working here. As you may guess, this one really freaked me out. Honestly, schizophrenia doesn't seem like a problem with her. She was only six years old. How could she kill her brother, a patient, and a guard? It has me considering the stuff her mother said about her. Being possessed. But, I don't know. I don't really believe in that stuff, and I'm not a doctor. I simply do the filing. 